We've spotted a beast in its natural. We've spotted a beast in its natural habitat. We've got it right where we want it. Let's move in closer. What have we found? A new gen. We found a new gen NG21F family bunk caravan. Yeah, what do you reckon of this thing? I reckon this thing's a bit of a beast, actually. And we would know, because we just used it. Yeah, we stayed, in, stayed it, in it, we towed it, we made a coffee, we, we sat outside. We are at Habitat Noosa. Check this place out. Look at this. We've done a separate video on this for you to look at, but now, Let's get into the review, what do you reckon? I reckon let's do it. This over here is our jockey wheel. This is for stability, but it also lifts the height of the caravan and lowers the height of the caravan. Right now we're currently level, we've set it up to be level. Over here we've got our hitch, the DO35. Just put this right on top on the back of your pin of your, um, your car. And once it's on and secure, you just flick that switch and then that locks in place. Yeah, you've got your emergency electric brake system. The moment that the caravan loses connection with the vehicle and this pulls, the emergency brakes activate. Over here, we've got our handbrake. Over here, we've got the chains that actually connect to the back of your vehicle with a D-shackle. We've got two gas canisters over here. Come take a look over here. Let's have a look at some of the storage. It's quite a bit of space to put all your goodies in here. You can put your jockey wheel and everything. Um, this here is a rubber sealant. Make sure that no water gets in here. We did have a little bit of rain last night and looking in this now, I can't see a single droplet of water, so that's pretty good. This is all made out of aluminium. Very light, quite durable, nice finish. Looks like you can put a padlock through there. Yeah, you can. Extra security and storage over there. And there's also this side as well. The top and side hatches. Here is where your auxiliary water supply is, or your mains water supply, or your city water supply, whatever you want to call it, whatever terms you use. Then right here on the corner of the van, we've got three reflectors on these sides here, just and easily spotted at I night. That's, yeah, that's an LED. Yeah, that's LED. And up for night travels. There's also LED. Good spot. Over here, we've got a pretty decent light. Um, last night, we had this on and it was actually really bright. It was um, going all the way there to about that tree down there in distance. So that's actually quite far for an LED powered light on a caravan. It's pretty impressive. It is nice for when it's dark here. We've got our tunnel boot. As you can see, there's quite a bit of storage here. You can see that it is RVMAP accredited as per Australian build standards. We've got a light over here as well, which makes it quite easy at night if you need to get anything out of the storage space. Uh, here we've got the pole that we use for our awning. This is to use the stabilizers on the legs, wind them up and wind them down. And yeah, as you can see, you can fit a person in there. Well, actually, let's test that out. So, who needs bunk beds when you've got this, right? It's huge. I think it is massive. It's probably fit in there with you too. I think, you, I think we can cuddle on you. <laughs> so then over here you can see that everything has actually been really nicely sealed. Just going along this, you, can't, you can barely even notice it. They've done it really well. Quite a neat, clean finish. I like that. Then we've got our awning is, over here. This is like a... Aluminium. Yeah, an extra layer of something. Mm -hmm. We've got our awning. It was really easy to put up, but some vans do have electric awnings. That is my personal preference. But yeah, this is really easy to put up. Um, it just would have been nice if we could have just pressed a button and it would go up. But that's got nothing to do with the van. Just the benefit you get with some others. Come over here. Here we can see our side stabilizer of the van. You use this to adjust it up and down. Here we've got our external gas fitter for running external appliances, like a gas cooker. Over here we've got a mid-door layout in this particular van. We've got our slide-out step. In some caravans you get an electric step, which is actually really cool, so you don't have to bend down and actually do this manually, but it's not an issue to actually do it. But yeah, nice step, good grip. Cool, now with our door, we've got two parts to it. We've got the fly screen, and as you can feel here, this is actually metal just to protect the actual fly screen itself. And then we've got the actual door here. 
So that is quite nice, keep out all the bugs and insects and mozzies and everything we've got here in Australia. So you can do that with your van. Just be careful if you've got a campfire <laughs> set up that you don't have any smoke going into the caravan because we set off the smoke alarm in this van. Yeah, we've got a handle to enter into the door. You will not believe how bright this blue light actually is at night. This lit up our entire space when we were sitting out here last night by our fire. We could see each other and everything. So this is a really bright, really cool light. Plus it's got the switch over here. We've got two speakers on the outside here that is connected with the radio. Um, you can play Bluetooth, AUX, anything with that. It's not the best speakers in the world, but I mean, we were able to set our channel, listen to some tunes, and we had a great time. So, yeah, I did notice considering the bass, that any songs that had like a more heavy bass, yeah. sort of bottomed out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like a bit of a bit of a buzz. Um, this van has been built using XPS foam. So the trademark name for this build structure and construction method is called Allopack. Usually using a one piece technology method. So it is just all flushed finish. You can see there's no connections here or anything where the van has been split. It's one single piece of the build and it's fully insulated. So that's, it will give you that durability and practicality for off road traveling. So I'm pretty sure this is fiberglass, foam. Mm -hmm. That's an aluminum internal structure. It's compressed in a hydraulic press and yeah, baked and yeah, it forms an extremely strong, rigid panel. Plus you get a five year structural warranty with this van when you buy it new, so that's pretty cool. Over here we got a slide out table. I actually quite like this. This is it's just- It's a fold out table, is it not? Fold out table. <laughs> slide out, fold out, whatever you want to be. Mention in the comments, is this a slide out or a fold out table? Let's say it's a slide out. Fold out. Now, the one thing I want to mention about this fold out table is this really nifty light switch over here. Come get a look at that. Right over there, just flick that, and you got your LED lights here, so you can actually see everything on your table. That's actually a really cool feature, especially because we've got another LED light up there. And that one's really bright, um, and it really gives you a lot of sight here at night. But if you don't want that on and you don't want to attract all the bugs, but you still want to be able to see what's on here, you just flick this little switch, and as you can see, it's got um. It's insulated there from any water, any water damage or anything like that. So it is a protected switch, which is, it's actually quite cool craftsmanship. Uh, I've got to give them that. Um, then over here, we've got our aerial connector. We've got a cigarette lighter down here. Plug anything in there, charge some phones, whatever. Or if you wanted to, you can connect your TV, put on this table out here, and then you can watch your favorite match of the spring box beat the wallabies. Yeah, we've got our power outlet, 10 amps. Pretty standard in these vans. LED light, reflector. I really like these decals. They actually look really cool, really modern. I like it. I think it's a bit kind of like retro modern vibe. And it's sick. I like the colors and everything. So I just wanted to put that, point that out. Over here, we've got um, probably one of the most important features that everyone seems to be scared of and wants to avoid, but we've got the dunny over here. It just slides out really easy. Yeah, we've got a heavy duty mud flap and we've got really good tread on these tires. These vans are built for off-road, so that is good to keep in mind. Dual axle caravan and I don't mind the rims of these tires. Okay, over here we've got another reflector and we've got another LED light. Yeah, we've got a steel bar bash guard. Make sure you don't reverse into anything. Here we've got our spare tire, great tread, same rim. All the same as the other ones we already had a look at. Over here, we got our two brake lights, LED system. This is the access to the shower pipeline. Over there, we've got our uh, rear camera that just connects with your vehicle. That is all inclusive, actually. An LED light for our license plate, illuminated at nighttime. Let's open this up, take a look at what's behind this door. We got some more storage space in there. You could even put your jockey wheel in there if you wanted to, or whatever, your kit, your chocks, your pipes, whatever you want to put in there. Maybe you want to put the dog or the cat in there. I don't know what your travelers do, but. And that's under the bunk bed. Under the bunk bed, yep. Yeah, we've got the two windows that come out from the bunk bed, so the kids can at least breathe at night or have their own airflow. This is the inlet, 15 amps. And here we've got our aerial inlet. This terminal must always vent directly to outdoors. That's for the fridge, the ventilation, ducts up the top and up the Probably bottom, yeah. so the fridge is positioned on the other side of that wall and that just is how the hot air gets out from, from behind the fridge. We've got two 95 litre water tanks. You just fill them up here and you can lock it for security. This is the access to the external shower, so you just gotta unlock it and then you can open it up. Pretty cool. Yeah, it is quite cool. Do your business over here. Um, it looks no, like a little don't. holder thing there It is. Too. 
cool. So you can just like set yeah. it up and like spray yourself yeah. directly in the face. Get it. Got LED lights, another reflector. We've got this really big window. It's a big window. And this one straight into the kitchen area. Good ve ventilation. We've got two battery boxes. So there's one spare and it comes with a battery and it comes with a solar panel. So that's already wired up. So you can actually camp like we did off grid and still have power. Tw only 12 volt though. So um, you're not running, you can't run the air conditioner, you can't yeah. run the fridge. But if you connect to mains, then you can run 240 volts. Then we got the other side of the tunnel boot. Open that up. I'm not gonna climb in from this side or crawl in from this side. And then just show that there for this, the 12 volt, 12 volt brakes. Brake, yeah, emergency brakes. Yep. This is the exhaust panel of the hot water system. We've now completed the exterior of the van. Okay, travelers, let's head inside and see what this bad boy's all about. Firstly, this door, if you're more than six foot, just watch your head when you're coming in. I did hit my head on that. Fire extinguisher mounted right here where you might need it. Up the top here, we've got a switch panel. This is where you turn the main system on here. And you can see battery voltage. You can see your water tank level, which is pretty good. Uh, you can see the solar panel and you can turn the water pump on here. Night mode just turns all the lights off. So it's not too bright. Here are your main light switches, turns all the lights on and off in the van, so let's leave all of them on now. This is the main bedroom area. This is, I guess, basically a queen size bed. I think if you were to measure it up with a normal queen size bed though, it's a little bit different. It's got rounded corners here, but let's just do a quick test. I'm six foot tall. If I was laying in this bed having a nap, my feet would just be at the bottom there and my head's just at the top. So a six foot tall person, you'll fit on here quite comfortably. It's an inner spring mattress. I slept on it last night. No complaints really. If you do need to sit and read some saucy material before you go to sleep, you should be able to see it quite easily. On and off switch under there. There is a bit of a padded headboard there. So if you're wrestling, in bed and you accidentally hit your head, it's not gonna hurt. Why would you be resting in bed? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> we have storage uh, above the bed on both sides. They're like a push button lockable thing, so it won't just fly open when you're driving. Quite secure. Some hang hanging space there. You can see the rail at the top, so you can get some shirts in there or your favorite, I don't know, pants, whatever you like to hang up. On and off, power point switches here. These only work if you're connected to mains power, but obviously you can plug in your iPhone charger. We've got more storage down here. Just a little bit of storage. You could probably get some shoes or, you know, maybe a blanket or something in there. So not a bad amount of storage next to the bed. There are two shelves here and just above. So you put your watch, your phone, your bits and pieces that you like to have when you uh, first wake up, right at hand. Jason, what is on this table? That, oh. that is the smoke alarm, which- Why is the smoke alarm on the counter? We actually had a little bit of a campfire last night and as usual, it was a bit smoky and set the fire alarm off. So we know it works, which is good. <laughs> Over this side of the caravan, there is a built-in swing arm here for mounting a television. Now, it is an optional extra. If you wanna get a telly mounted in here, you just have to ask for it. But all of the uh, bits and pieces that you need for power, aerial, everything is right here. So you can hook your telly up Watch it in bed or watch it from over in the uh, lounge room area there. Okay, above the bed here, we also have LED lighting, which they're quite bright actually. More lights here that you can control around the frame of this roof panel. 
And yeah, it's a massive hatch that opens up there, captures a lot of the breeze that's coming through. There's also built-in fly screen or a blind that you can bring across there to block out the light. I probably should have done that this morning because uh, look where that light comes in, right on your head. Great way to wake up in the morning. Let's have a look at the kitchen. The big question with kitchens, can you actually cook your family a meal in here? This is a family van. Is there enough bench space? Bearing in mind, that lifts up and the stove is there. So in reality, what we're talking about in terms of bench space, this table and this space here next to the sink. So what do you think? Is that enough for you to prepare a meal for your family? Um, I think you have to just be very efficient with your, your layout, get everything prepped and yeah, you should be fine. So we have gas by three and electric plate by one there. It's a standard stove top, essentially. Push it in and turn it, press the button and it lights. Too easy, nothing to worry about there. The electric one will only work when you're plugged into mains at a caravan park. And you can put this down if you're not using it and there's actually a work space there or you just put the cover down and you get the full space of the bench there. We have a little grill oh, that section is here. Nice. Yeah. Cool that it, slides up like that. it comes with a little, little tray. tray so you could probably, I don't know, toast some bread under there, maybe make a pizza under there. There's, a pie or something. there's also an oven. Whoa. That's a massive oven, man. It's all caravan. It is pretty good, hey? It's pretty big. I reckon you could put some pizzas in there, cook a roast maybe. Once again, you're not going to be using this unless you're plugged into mains power. So bear that in mind. Otherwise, if you're off-grid camping like what we're doing now, you'll be outside cooking open, cooking on the open fire. Okay, as we move through the kitchen, let's go to the upper levels here. Microwave, honestly, I don't think I'd ever use a microwave in a van. You might want to ask if you can have that take it out and maybe save some coin, just have some extra storage, whatever. If you think you'll use it, leave it in there. We've got quite a large cabinet over the sink, another cabinet here. This is the stereo systems head unit. It is Bluetooth. We got it to work without any major issues yesterday. The phone connected pretty easy to it. You can control the sound zones. So you've got an in interior zone with two speakers here and here. Or if you're gonna be outside and the people inside don't wanna listen to your music, you can simply divert it to outside only and have it quiet on the inside, maybe if the kids are asleep. As we move down the hallway, we can see we've got a cabinet here. We've got the battery charger and electrical control system up here. There are some indicator lights on here so you know if you are plugged into mains. You've got some main switches here for your air conditioner, fridge and hot water system. So this is where all the electricity is stored and you don't really need to know much about that. It's all pretty straightforward. We didn't have any problems. It all worked straight away. We have a whole bunch of LED lights running down this hallway section in the living room area here. Provides a lot of illumination. If your family is in here eating, you're not gonna have a problem seeing. It's nice and bright. More storage. On the other side of the van here, above the seating area, three large cabinets. They are all push button, so they're not gonna come flying open. They're locked secure, securely. I don't know, maybe an extra shelf or something in there might be something you could consider. If you're into DIY, you can think about those ideas. What are you gonna store in there? Maybe make it your own with some modifications. Taking a seat now, ah, oh, what do you think? Four people? I think my wife and my two kids and myself would sit here and have a meal quite easily. Probably one person at the end here yeah, I think this would work. 
We've also got a nice panoramic window here. The breeze coming through here is really nice at the moment. If you want a bit of privacy, you can slide that up. And that's like an insulative material. It's, it's uh, silver, you can't see it, but on the other side, it's a reflective material there to block the sun and the rays, the heat rays from coming in. So you can keep it nice and cool in here, especially if you've got the air con on. Uh, back into the kitchen. Built in to the cabinet here is the range hood. It's basically an exhaust fan if you don't know what that means. So if you are cooking, good idea to have this on. It will suck all of the fumes and the heat from your cooking and blast it out the back onto your neighbor's caravan. We have a pull-out drawer for storage on this side and a pull-down door where some of your plumbing is, you've got your water pump, you've got a gas uh, cutoff switch there. So if you need to do any plumbing maintenance, that's how you access it all beneath there. Under the oven, there's another uh, area for pots and pans. The fridge, oh, that's cute. Little ice maker. That's a decent sized freezer. It has a little latch there, so it locks nicely. Look. That's a nice looking fridge. I don't think anyone would have any complaints about that. There's a fair amount of space in there. Maybe bigger than some people's fridge at home. There's a little display panel here, which tells you if you're running off mains, battery, gas. Right above me, we have another massive roof hatch with the blind or the insect or just fully open. There's a, another switch for the LED lights there. So there's no shortage of LED lights in this van. I don't think you'll be complaining about illumination. Okay, let's have a little chat about this table here. You can fully rotate it, which may or may not be that beneficial. Maybe to get in and out of the seat, that's that's useful. I'm, I don't think it has a height adjustment, but it's certainly, you can disassemble it. You can loosen this and another one here and completely remove this table so you've got a little bit more dancing room. Underneath the table, two mains outlets as well. Once again, you do need to be connected to the external 240 volt power. Under the sink, a large deep storage cabinet there obviously you've got plumbing and stuff coming through as well it's relatively neat and tidy but it does take up a bit of the space down there so you don't get full use of that area but that's just how it is the pipes have to run somewhere large sliding drawer soft close which is pretty cool see that and it won't just slide open. It is a push button lock system. Another one, another one. And the bottom one is just a little fold down hatch. That's actually a, a large space there. So quite a bit of storage in this side of the van. Moving down the hallway into the ensuite and bunk bed area. What did you think, Tristan? You, you slept on this one last night? Sure, it did. It was actually very comfortable and I fit in there. Yeah. Quite easily, and I'm six foot nine, so. Yeah, you're six foot nine. You got in there no ways. There is a ladder here that we didn't have to use, but it's pretty straightforward. It just goes on there. The kids will find that quite easy to use to get up into the top bunk there. The one thing I want to comment on is some caravans will have a built in ladder here that just goes down perfectly flush with little holes in there. Those are actually like pretty sore to put your feet on to climb up, and I'm talking about that as an adult. This is actually quite nice and easy. Yeah, it feels feels like there's a bit of grip there. It feels like a secure ladder, yeah. so that's good. The gadgets we've got here for the kids, so I can see a 12 volt cigarette lighter output there, so put one of those little USB charger adapters in there, charge up all your iPads, iPhones, all your electronic gadgets that your kids love, a reading light as well, and a switch that I can't reach. 
I don't know what that does. There we go. Ah, look at that. Ah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is very cool. So there's a little storage section in the the wall there. Mm -hmm. and, so, and it lights up. Yeah, so you've got a little light and the same the under here. there. That's pretty cool. So light, charging point, and a switch to turn the, the back lights on. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, we have one LED light. Sorry, we have two LED lights currently not on. How do, oh, there we go. So the two lights are on now. Quite, quite enough light for that space. Now, what do we have here? Looks like quite a bit of storage. Yeah, that's a good storage space. Yeah, that's, that's massive. So if you wanted to take a whole set of clothes and, and have them stored somewhere, towels, clothes, you're gonna fit a hell of a lot of stuff in there. What have we got down here? Oh yeah, little washing machine. That's interesting. So it looks like we have to open up to get to the washing machine. It's a little top loader and yeah, tucked away in there. I guess that's pretty handy. If you've got kids that dirty all their clothes all the time, whack it in there, clean it. We have a sliding door and it has a lock mechanism. There we go, to stop it banging about when you're driving and Look at that, so a little bit of privacy if anyone wants to uh, have a, a sit down in here, you can do it in privacy or a shower of course. Let's uh, lock that back up and step inside. So the question I have is once you've had a shower, is there enough space in here to dry off and get changed into your clothes and do all your your hair and your makeup and all your bits and pieces. Look, I think there is. I think there's enough space. You could sit some towels and bits and pieces here and there's still room to move around after coming out of the shower. So And there's still the tile right Quite the yeah, there. quite a decent space. Yeah, your towel rail there. Huge amount of storage. Look at that. That's massive up there. We do have a little hatch here. It's like an exhaust fan and a hatch combined into one with an insect um, cover there. So look at that. We have a large mirror here, which is great for looking at yourself. <laughs> Jason's favorite thing to do. Uh, the wife, I'm sure, would appreciate this. Getting the makeup sorted out each morning and you know, getting your hair good before you step out and enjoy your campground. We've got toilet roll holder, pretty standard stuff there, folks. This is a fairly standard looking toilet as well. Basically, it flushes when you press the button. See that? Water goes down there, washes all the good stuff away. There's a hatch. There we go, simple as that. Always keep the hatch in when you're driving, otherwise you might have like a volcano kind of <laughs> effect. That'll be fun, you know. Okay, let's get in the shower. Quite a narrow entrance into this shower, but really not a big concern. Once you're in here, there is room enough for me to, to fully move around and, and shower myself in here. Could you get two kids in here at the same time? Probably. There's a soap holder here. Everything's um, secured here at the moment, so I'm not sure exactly how much I can demonstrate this, but you can imagine being in here, grab this by your hand and have a shower, or just position it here using this adjustable mechanism, and hot and cold, all pretty straightforward stuff. There's a plug at the bottom there, so you could actually fill this up with a bit of water if you, maybe if you have a small baby and you want to have a, a little bath, basically. Now, here's your light switches. So that's doing, there's a light in the shower. Oh, that's cool. Light on, off, so you can see all your dirtiest bits. And this one, on, off. So pretty straightforward and power here for 
your hair straightener, hair dryer. Once again, only works if you're connected to the mains power. Okay, let's get the width of the door here. 61 centimeters. What about the height of the door? 1.73. So I'm 1.82 and you can see the problem. You hit your head on it. There is space for a taller door, so not sure if that's an, an option. We will be at the factory to see how these get assembled, and I will ask them that. Can I get a bigger door? Because I don't like smacking my head on it. Total width of the caravan, 2,179 centimeters. Width between the bed cabinets, one, 0.58 meters. Length of the bed to the headrest. I'll just go off my leg here to get, the bed length is 1.86 meters. So like I said, I'm 182 centimeters. That gives me four centimeters of space. So I fit on there nicely. The gap between the bed and the walkway is 31 centimeters in there. The hallway length is 4.17 meters. Gap between the table and the cabinets here, 54 centimeters. Length of the kitchen bench area, 1.69 meters. Depth of the cabinet, or the depth of the bench tops, 62 centimeters. Height, 57 centimeters. The length of the dining suite, 1.91 meters. So that's quite, quite a long lounge area. Here to the wall is 91 centimeters. Door width here is 56 centimeters. Hallway width between the door and the widest part of the bunk bed is 56 centimeters there. This opening at its maximum is 69 centimeters. The length, the longest length of the ensuite, 1.11 centimeters. The width between the door and the cabinet, 60 centimeters. Height from floor to ceiling is 1.98 meters. So that's quite a good amount of head space. You'd have to be a very tall individual to be bumping your head there. So no issues with height. The shower dimensions, 80 centimeters by 80 by 68 centimeters. And length of bunk beds, 1.84. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's a good length. That's the same length as the main bed. What about the height from the top of the mattress to the next bunk? That's 55 centimeters. Did you have any issues with that? No, I actually got out of that really easily. Yeah, didn't bump your head or anything? No, it's this, actually quite a generous amount of space. So a little bit less here, 53 centimeters. But yeah, they're, they're suitable beds for adults. Not a problem with that at all. Okay, there you go. Hopefully that information helps you make a buying decision. I know it's very important for me to know, can my family sit and eat and have a meal? Can they fit in the beds? Can my kids fit in the shower? Can my wife get ready with a bit of privacy in the bathroom? All of these things are super important and hopefully with these measurements, it will help you make a more educated buying decision. We have one water tank just in front there, tucked up under the floor. So that does not look like there's any risk that will strike a rock. The clearance on this thing is massive. I'm under here and, and I've got plenty of room to move around. Just above me is the second water tank. And behind that, we can see quite a bit of the plumbing. That looks like the, the waste for the shower. Okay, so you, there is no gray water tank on this caravan. You can see the waste from the shower all runs out over there. So you would have to attach, just on the end of that white pipe there, a gray water waste pipe and deal with your waste water responsibly. It looks like there's some additional mounting points here for another tank. So you could actually put a gray water tank or perhaps just I'm not, well, there's already two water tanks. So yeah, it would be, it would be for mounting your gray water tank. So if you are camping off grid and you cannot responsibly deal with your wastewater, having a tank is the right thing to do. The electrical wires have a protective plastic conduit around them. They're insulated clips. Everything looks secure. 
and well positioned and tidy. The, the frame has a black, is painted with black. It, I believe it's a steel frame. Yeah, very neat and tidy, all blacked out under here. Drum brakes on all four wheels. Okay, let me know if there's any more questions or if you'd like to see anything in more detail under these caravans. Right oh, right oh, right oh. What do we reckon, Jake? Is it the perfect caravan is the big question. Is it the, what is, what is a perfect caravan? That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. I don't know whether this is the perfect caravan, but I do know my family would comfortably fit in here. I could cook them a meal. It has all of the things and probably a few things that I don't need to have a comfortable camping session off grid, on grid. So overall, I can't really fault it, uh, but it's over to you. What do you think? Well, I mean, <sighs> Yeah, you're right. What is a perfect caravan? To me, a perfect caravan would be one that does exactly what you needed to do and go where you need, want to go with it and all of that. You know, is it practical? Is it durable? And are you happy with it? And, you know, is it affordable for you in, within your budget? So within this van, what I liked about it is I like the bunk beds. I actually found that to be very comfortable as an adult to fit in there and sleep in there. I really like the lights of this van. It's very bright, it's very well illuminated. So, you know, there's no moments of dark spots or anything with this. I do like the fact that it's an off-road caravan as well. Yeah. It does give you that little bit of options. Even if you're not going off-roading, you still have the option to if you ever want to. What do you like about the van? Look, it is a big van and uh, I yeah, must it's admit- 21 feet. Yeah, yeah I must admit foot. where we parked it here, <clears> like <throat> towing it into a tight mm. section and reversing when there's a lot of trees, that is a bit of a challenge. You really yeah. would want someone to help you and yell out at you if you're doing something that's about to cause damage to your own property or someone else's property. Mm. So that's a bit tricky because it's so big, but that size makes it much more comf comfortable on the interior for your whole family. So mm. you can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. I think mm. any smaller and you're sacrificing some of these awesome yeah. amenities but yeah, you're just gonna have to deal with the fact that you got 21 foot of beast. Space, yeah, yeah. I mean, but the cool thing about Nugen as a manufacturer is all, you can get the vans custom built and you as the user and the owner, the final buyer, can actually build your own van with Nugen on their website. So you just yeah. go on to build a van. You can Choose put all colors. your decors, your appliances, your add-on aftermarket. You can build your own van from start to finish, get a quote to pay the deposit, and you're good to go. So that is actually quite a cool thing about new gen as a manufacturer. I don't think I would get the microwave. You, don't, you, you wouldn't? I, don't think I, I think I would get a microwave, though. Popcorn, I don't know. maybe? Popcorn. I might put it like a cup of frozen meals in the freezer for when you're yeah. feeling lazy. Chuck it in there, you know. I don't, I don't have kids, but I can imagine when you're with kids, oh, or even if you've got leftovers, you just want to reheat the, heat them up, you've got a lazy day. Yeah, I think a microwave would come in handy. And it actually doesn't take up that much space, really. No, not like really, it's, yeah. It's a cute little unit. Yeah, and I do like the fact that the microwave is up top, so you don't have to bend up and down all the time to use it. So that is a cool feature of it, actually. I don't know yeah. if you can upgrade the speakers, but I like a bit of bass. I yeah, like a bit of clarity. A bit of, I'd a probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd probably upgrade the speakers. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I like to listen to my music mm. and I like it to be crisp and clean and have mm. a good dynamic range. And I didn't get that sense with those speakers last night. Yeah. Well, I don't think I would really use the stereo system. I think I would bring my own like JBL speakers or something. So right the stereo system of the van isn't an important aspect for me, but you know, the radio I can imagine would be because I'm not someone that listens to the radio. So if you listen to the radio, then this could be a cool stereo system for you. I would like an outdoor kitchen, honestly. I don't that know. That would be amazing, a, yeah. yeah. That would that, be cool. Is that an option? Yeah. I don't know. You should yeah. ask if if you want to buy something like this, ask. How do I have Can an, I outdoor, an outdoor, outdoor kitchen? Yeah, how do we make that happen? Yeah, that is yeah. very true. Look, that's about it for from us. I think yeah. we've had a good time. No major complaints. Um, yeah, looking forward to our visit to the factory to see how these things are put mm. together. Like we wanna we wanna get to the bottom of this stuff and yeah. get the real facts, ask the tough questions. See what's going on. See who designs and engineers these things. See, yeah. meet the people who assemble it. Like, 
What are the tools that they're using? What are the processes? How do they ensure the quality's up to the, the right standard to satisfy the consumers? Mm -hmm. I want to know all this stuff. Yeah, jump in the comments. Let us know what do you want to know about new gen caravans. Come okay. along with us, travelers. Catch See you next time. Bye.